During Omega Psi Phi Fraternity's 10th District Convention in Madison, Wisconsin last year, each chapter in the district was charged with identifying at least one young man at risk of social economic isolation in their communities of service and guiding that young man through a local career training program. To meet the district's charge, IOTA chapter turned to Youth Peace Center, a nonprofit violence prevention organization based in Chicago's Roseland community to identify candidates for the Workforce Development Initiative. YPC is one of a handful of organizations affiliated with Chicago CRED, which stands for Creating Real Economic Development, an effort developed by Chicagoan and former U.S. Education Secretary Arnie Duncan in response to the alarming frequency of gun violence in the city. Chicago CRED is an outgrowth of Duncan's work as Managing Director with the Emerson Collective, a nonprofit social impact organization founded by Lauren Powell Jobs, the widow and heir of the late Apple co-founder Steve Jobs. Well, IOTA Chapter was looking to partner with an organization anyway to mentor a young man as per our, our fraternity's district uh, guidelines and we were put in touch with the Youth Peace Center of Roseland and Miss Jones over there who's absolutely fabulous. Uh, she, we told her about our program and she not only gave us one young man, but she wound up, we wound up having uh, six young men. Over the next several months, IOTA chapter members would work directly with career mentoring program participants, including Antoine Viverette, Kevin Smith, Damon Bankhead, Gerald McLaren, Gregory Presley, and Andre Garrett, all referred by YPC director Wendy guys Jones. Come to us without the basic necessities, you know, like, and when I say that, I, I mean a lack of uh, shelter, um, uh, no identification, no, you know, things that we take for granted, like a state ID, a birth certificate, a place to sleep at night. We've had um, some of our clients sleep on trains, you know, um, just riding it out to the next morning because they have nowhere to go. Um, housing is, is a huge component. And then just the overall safety that it's very unfortunate, that, but we do have uh, a very high crime rate as it relates to youth violence in this community. And so it's just really uh, unsafe block to block for guys. Um, it's literally, you can have an op on two blocks over. And, um, and so just trying to get them around to uh, get the resources they need is challenging. Uh, trying to get a different mindset is challenging. Uh, some of what they're going through, the trauma they experienced over the, over the years is, is in many, many times it's uh, generational. And so maybe their fathers did it, or maybe they've just in a, been on a block where everyone is involved in some type of unhealthy uh, engagement and they don't know uh, which way to go. And so we just really work with the mentoring component and just really help to uh, reshape their thinking and to uh, help to, them to make healthy decisions so around housing, safety, stability, fathering, you know, education, employment, all the things that many of us take for granted. Understood. Mm -hmm. And so the work that you've done with our group um, tell us about what that has provided and, and what potential you see provided by the partnership that we formed. Yeah, well, the a partnership is amazing. As a matter of fact, I've been talking to um, many in the organization that we really need to have more men involved like the men of Omega Sci-Fi. Um, already knew that uh, the men of Omega Sci-Fi and all the, the Black Greek fraternities, uh, male and female, do amazing work around uh, social causes. Uh, when the when your organization came to me, I was really, really excited because we just need to link men with positive role models. And that's one of the things that our young men who are involved in violence, that is what we routinely see is that there's really no positive role model that they're connected to. Uh, there's no one for them to see um, what it looks like to get up every morning and to go to work. They don't get a chance to see, um, you know, what it means to be a good parent. They don't get to see what it means to pay your rent. 
on time so that you have a place to stay or to choose paying your rent above buying a pair of gym shoes. With the help of IOTA Chapter, providing daily round-trip transportation, lunches, and other day-by-day monitoring and support, five of six participants in the Career Mentoring Program successfully completed a National Forklift Operator Certification at Olive Harvey College's Center for Transportation, Distribution, and Logistics. Dean LaTanya Armstrong with (laughs) City Colleges of Chicago, and you are, tell us your position specifically uh, with Olive Harvey and the uh, Center for Transportation and Logistics there. Oh, thank you so much, Andre. Um, My LaTanya Armstrong, I'm the Dean here for the TDL Center, uh, Transportation, Distribution, and Logistics, and my role is really to find ways to support the community in bridging the gap between skilled or between skilled workforce and getting them into uh, livable wages or jobs. You've got a beautiful facility there at Olive Harvey. How long has it been up and running? And tell us a little bit about it, uh, what it cost us to get that beautiful uh, facility Uh, in the community. (laughs) Absolutely. This uh, facility uh, was just recently erected in 2019. We just, uh, opened our doors in August of last year. So we've been running for about a year. It's 103,000 square feet of uh, all things TDL, which is automotive. I'm in front of the diesel bay now. Um, (laughs) We have a forklift uh, training flex. We also have um, a CDL training pad, as well as a CDL dedicated classroom. We have simulators. We have um, maybe about 12 engines and maybe about 15 or so uh, tractor trailers that were donated from some of our key partners. And it's about opening the doors and opening up opportunities and awareness to industries that are pandemic proof, um, that are part of the essential workforce that we have been utilizing for these past several months, but also all throughout. And I take it it's no accident that this facility pops up in a community that maybe has some challenges when it comes to uh, workforce opportunities. That's absolutely right? right. That's absolutely right. We pride ourselves on bringing this type of technology, which is unheard of for the city of Chicago, but bringing it right here in the heart of the South Side um, to get open our doors to, like I mentioned before, bring awareness to these wonderful opportunities that individuals may not have known about, may not have even heard um, the word logistics, let alone what that means to everyday life. I like to, um, when I'm in front of students for an orientation, I always say, you know, have you ever looked at or thought about where you maybe have your gym shoes or your earrings or whatever the case may be? that you getting that product or you even being here is all a part of logistics. And when you kind of bring it home to people or make them aware that it's something that they use each and every day, it turns a light on and it opens up possibilities for potential career advancement or introduction to a career they may not have known about. And so the young men that we've been working with were through uh, Youth Peace Center, um, Mm -hmm. they were ideal fits, it seems, for this type of program. Is that right? Absolutely. We were looking not only to provide awareness and and opportunities to all individuals, but really focusing on our black and brown um, uh, community members to give them, open up the idea of going into this industry. The TDL industry is not uh, necessarily as diverse as we would like it to be. Um, So getting individuals in, especially the young ages of uh, the the people that you brought in, I think they were between 18 and 24 or 26, opens up their minds to a lot of opportunities, but also gives them advantage to possibly change the the trajectory of their um, of their situations. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's it's providing an um, a vision of hope. Uh, many of our men are just really hopeless when it comes to will they ever get a job? Will they ever uh, be able to be around people that um, are working every day? And um, when they see that, when they can experience, when they have something to add to their very uh, 
I almost want to say blank resume, it, it gives them hope that maybe they'll be able to find a job. Uh, that credential means a lot to them. One of the gentlemen came in today. The training just ended uh, last week, but one of the guys that Omega Sci-Fi helped with, uh, he came in to show his, his credential to everyone. That forklift training um, is going to open up some doors for those six men. And uh, that's all we want to do for our men across the city is to open doors. I'm Andre Garner reporting from Chicago on the Black Agenda Think Tank for QTV. Oh, 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 oh,